Hello, and this is Kurokami, and I'm back for yet another Junji Ito Anime Collection review. And today, we're going over episode 11. Before anything, spoiler warning is in effect, so if you haven't watched the anime or read the manga and you don't want anything spoiled, do that and come back. So really, the only thing I can say overall with this episode is that it wasn't very horror-esque. I mean, yes, each story had horror elements within, but like the first story kind of felt like a sci-fi action. And the second one was more, like, emotional than anything else. So, with that out of the way, let's get creepy. Okay, so for our first story of the night, the manga chapter was titled, The Supernatural Transfer Student. And that was 60 pages. So they covered all that in roughly, like, the first two-thirds of the whole episode. So most of the episode was dedicated to this story quite interesting because it's like the first around six pages of the actual story are kind of skipped and they cover them later on so you actually start a little ways into the story where they pick up where the transfer student actually comes to the school but kind of like besides that very little is cut out they pretty much are very truthful to the overall story which is actually kind of surprising judging that it's 60 pages and typically with their longer stories that they do with the anime they kind of cut out a lot more but they actually didn't so i was, I was quite surprised when i found that out there was very little horror actually in this episode again like i said before there are horror elements in it and certain things happen but besides that it's a very different take that Junji Ito decided to do with the story. But with that out of the way, let's start the first story. Supernatural events surely exist. Non-believers just haven't realized it yet. In our first bizarre story of the night, we follow a group of high school kids. More specifically, the Supernatural Club. A group of young kids who think there is more to this world than meets the eye. Club president Shibayama Hikaru, for one, is a prime example of this. The gifted boy seems to have the ability to break spoons with his mind. In Awoken Ability, as the boy calls it, Shibayama explains how only believers will actually understand it. That only believers will be saved. He must be speaking the truth as Shibayama has even been invited to be on TV to perform his special ESP powers for the whole world to see. Though not as powerful, Kitagawa Kiyoshi, another member as well, has a gift. The ability to read others' inner spirits, which never fails to impress the other club members. Seems like this group has a lot going for it. As long as they are for real. Unaware to not only the Supernatural Club, but the entire school, things were about to get a whole lot more supernatural when a boy by the name of Tsukano Ryo graced the class with his abnormal presence. Obsessed with finding mysterious things, Tsukano is quickly labeled as a weirdo. But, maybe there might just be a place where he does fit in at the school. Yes, sounds like the boy is a perfect fit for the Supernatural Club. Not long after, Shibayama and other member, Hosotani Maiko, approached the new transfer kid, inviting him to share his love for the Supernatural with them. Tsukano eagerly accepts, not even for a second doubting anything that they tell him. That's when he notices it. Tsukano reaches into a nearby bush and pulls out a flower. Not an ordinary everyday flower, but one that seemed to come straight out of the mind of a madman. Instead of the actual flower, a gruesome eye lay at the end of the stem. And that wasn't the only one. A whole patch of them seemed to have sprouted up. Tsukano is overjoyed. What a magnificent town! I'm so happy! The boy shouts to himself as he skips away with not a single care in the world. After school, Tsukano is introduced to the rest of the gang, but more importantly, they need to talk about their strange discovery. Shockingly enough, the flower was 100% genuine. Kitagawa adds that it might even be the bound spirits of past samurai. After yet another impressive display of breaking spoons from Shibayama, Tsukano over-enthusiastically begs to give it a shot himself. Why not? You won't know until you try, Shibayama proclaims. As you would expect, the new kid breaks the spoon as well on his first try. Does he have powers as well? Quickly cutting them off, Tsukano tells him that it's only a joke. That after weakening the metal beforehand, he was easily able to break the spoon in front of them all. Of course though, Shibayama's performance was the real deal. 
He was not using some cheap trick like Sukano just did. He was a true psychic. After noticing Shibayama's strange behavior the following day, Hosotani and Kitagawa, out of concern, try to understand their friend. He must be focusing his mind. His TV appearance is coming up soon, after all, Hosotani explains. Kitagawa, however, seems to be doubting their president after last night's magic trick. Before they can say any more, that's when the two are braced with the presence of their new friend Sukano. Seems like he has found an amazing waterfall a little far north. That's strange as both Hosotani and Kitagawa can't recall there ever being a waterfall in this town. So then the group decides to head over to this waterfall that no one seems to have known existed. But to their surprise, just like Sukano told them, there it was. A huge waterfall lay upon their eyes. Must really be something truly supernatural as it was even able to break Shibayama's silence. It's not that he was trying to act weird or anything, it's just that viewers nowadays might not be surprised by spoonbending. That's when Tsukano tells the group that this waterfall really is supernatural. If you stand under the falls, you will gain supernatural powers. To prove himself, Tsukano targets a nearby bird and BAM! Shoots the bird straight out of the sky with a blast of energy. It was the very next day that Shibayama disappeared. Not even his best friends knew his whereabouts. For anyone knew the poor boy could be dead. At least for the group, they still had one more psychic on their team, and he knows where their friend is. That's when Kitagawa lets the others in on the truth. Shibayama is in the basin of the waterfall. Unfortunately, his spirit is already bound to the place, and it would be impossible to remove his remains. The group thought it was a suicide due to the stress Shibayama was going through, but Tsukano knows better. He was going to get hit by the waterfall to try to draw unknown powers from within, and fell, Tsukano explained to the group. Not even the police could help save their friend. The whole club was in a depressing slump. The town was changing, and their president was gone. Of course none of this was going to stop Tsukano. No. He was still trying to find supernatural things, and boy did he find something strange this time. A lake, one kilometer away. Sure enough, just as his other discoveries, this too was true. A lake, but this was ridiculous. There was a residential district with lots of houses here before. What about all of the people? All on nerve already, the group seems to be turning on the new transfer kid. It was his fault that Shibayama was gone. Tsukano is not phased. He can't help but to laugh. After all, Shibayama did die in a supernatural waterfall. Who knows? He might even be revived and come back. There's no telling what could happen. Everyone needs to stop and just enjoy the now. They are the supernatural club, so of course there's going to be danger. It's the best part of the beast. That's when a real beast emerges from the water. A prehistoric dinosaur from the Stone Ages. What the hell was going on with this town? It was now official. The girls knew Sukuna was behind the abnormal events that were going on here. As soon as he transferred, all of the strange things began. The poor girls were to the point that they didn't even want to return to school out of fear of being caught up by Sukuna. Unknown to them, though, an old friend was about to make his return. Then, BAM! 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 Hey, my, it's me, open up! The voice, it was Shibayama, he's alive! Without a moment to waste, Hosotani darts to answer the door only to lay her eyes upon a bloated monster. Riddled with cuts, foaming mouth, and an enlarged body, the boy who was once Shibayama stood at the door. Hosotani quickly slams it, but Shibayama simply blasts the door away. The girls run as fast as they can, not caring where they go, as long as they are away from that monster. If things weren't already bizarre as it was, a row of giant Easter Island heads lay where Kitagawa's house once stood. Both Kitagawa and Tsukano were already at the scene. 
Also, Tiny spares no expense in blaming Sukano for everything that was going on, but how could he have possibly caused all of this? Finally, the last member of the Supernatural Club makes his appearance. Shibiyama had finally caught up with him, and without saying a single word, he shoots one of the statues down, almost crushing Kitagawa. It was obvious that Shibiyama was trying to kill Kitagawa, but why? That's when Kitagawa himself shows that he too has supernatural powers, as he jumps, floating in the air. It was time to strike back. His shot, however, makes a direct hit, blowing Shibiyama into pieces. Turns out, Tsukano knew the truth all along. That night, Shibiyama went to the waterfall, but out of greed and jealousy, Kitagawa pushes the poor boy to his death, so that it was only him getting the supernatural powers. Still, Kitagawa loved this new world and wanted to share it with Tsukano. Tsukano, however, could not live up to his expectations. It was then the following day that the transfer student left, and so the town returned to normal. Kitagawa followed suit in search for Tsukano, which marked the end of the Supernatural Club. I wonder what strange discoveries that transfer student is finding at his next school. The last story covered in today's episode was called Scarecrows and the manga equivalent was about 31 pages. First off, though this one was very short, the presentation was good. I felt like the overall flow of the episode was pretty solid, and it didn't feel rushed like some of the stories have. The only complaint I would have to say is with like the second minor story they do with the one boy, that did feel a little bit rushed, and they cut a lot out from his story when they presented the anime. The main part of the story, they covered very truthfully. They cut out a lot of the world-building scenes. They're not necessarily very important, but they help shape the world. There was a little bit of an absence of that in the story. Again, like... Actually, like, reviewing this whole series so far, I've really noticed that Junji Ito does not just do horror. And, like, he does a lot of sad stories that make you feel for the characters, and it's not, not like, oh, that's scary. It's like, wow, I feel really bad for that person. And that's how I felt like with this episode. This was definitely my favorite of the two stories. The first story... I was like, okay, it's not bad, but it's not good either, I guess. But this one, I actually really enjoyed this, and I remember when I first read it, it was very enjoyable. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's start the second story. A sad day for a small town. They had just lost one of their own. Not from murder or accident, but from suicide. Young Yuki, out of depression and stress, opted to take the quick way out. Mr. Numata, her father, was forced to bury his own daughter after already losing his wife as well. Day in and day out, the lonesome father kneels at his daughter's grave. What did he do wrong? How could he have prevented such a tragedy? He, though, was not the only one suffering. Unaware to the entire town, but scarecrows were about to become quite popular. Currently just to scare away birds and stuff, no one could have ever guessed that they had a second use as well. Yuki did not just leave her father behind. No, she also left behind a fiancé, Toshio. Too bad Mr. Numata was not happy to meet the boy. You see, Toshio and Yuki loved each other very much and planned to marry. But Mr. Numata opposed the marriage, causing his own daughter to take her own life, since she could not be with the one that she loved. This left a sour taste in both parties' mouths, resulting in Mr. Numata to blame Toshio for his daughter's death. All Toshio wanted to do was to pay his respects and give some flowers, but it seems like he wasn't even allowed to do that. Mr. Numata was determined to rid his daughter's grave from this past. If words weren't going to work, then, how about a scarecrow? Toshio had enough for one day. Fine, he'll leave. It wasn't long before the owners came looking for the stolen scarecrow. 
Mr. Numata quickly apologizes for borrowing it without permission, but then realizes it. The scarecrow had changed. It resembled more of a human than anything else. Was this the same scarecrow? It wasn't but four days later that the plain-looking bird scare had completely changed. Could this be true? Now instead of scaring pests, it was scaring Mr. Numata. It was his beloved Yuki. Her spirit had possessed the scarecrow. Nearby yet another person was suffering at the hands of losing their own child. The woman's boy Shigeru was said to have drowned in the river not too long before Yuki's suicide. As the couple mourns the death of their son, they notice a peculiar sight. A man was walking away with the scarecrow. It was Mr. Numata and he was taking his daughter home. Kind of strange as upon reveal, it was simply an ordinary scarecrow. Was Mr. Numata hallucinating the whole thing due to his own grief? Turns out it was all true as the whole town gawks over the unusual sight. It's just that the soul of Yuki can only inhabit the Scarecrow if it is standing by her grave. Anywhere else and it just becomes a normal Scarecrow. Before long, everyone was bringing the dead back to life, so to speak, and soon the entire graveyard was filled with these human lookalikes, all morphing into the dead just as Yuki did. Finally, Toshio too met the shocking discovery, as upon arrival to Yuki's grave, he is met with the piercing stare of her scarecrow. Shigeru's mother, just as the rest, was dead set on setting up a scarecrow for herself, but why was her husband so against it? Thinking it's creepy and wrong, he tries his best to stop her, but the boy's mother was going to do this. Just because he was not Shigeru's real father doesn't mean he has to say no after all. In a pleasant dream, Toshu prepares himself to marry Yuki, but is soon struck with the harsh reality that it is never meant to be, as Yuki points to what she is now. A scarecrow. Toshio quickly snaps back to reality, only to realize that he is in the graveyard. Did he come there without realizing it? Again, he is met with a piercing stare from Yuki. Then, after hearing strange whispers from every direction, Toshio dashes away screaming for anyone to save him. The next morning, Mr. Numata is met with a disturbing discovery. Upon arrival to the grave, he is met with Yuki's scarecrow, but instead of being where it should be, it is laying on top of Toshio. He, he was dead. An angry yet terrified face, that is what Shigeru's parents met when they came to check on his scarecrow. Why the expression? And why was it staring at the husband? Well, the man had enough of it. He quickly rips the scarecrow out of the ground, but loses his balance causing himself to fall into another platform. Shigeru's scarecrow had pierced his stomach. He too, was dead. I knew it! You killed Shigeru! The boy was at peace. Mr. Numata had given up. Yuki, you can stay with the one you love. This has been the Junji Ito Anime Collection Review, Episode 11. Please leave questions, concerns, what you thought about the episodes, if they fit your expectations, all down in the comment section below, as well as to like and subscribe for more content in the future. This has been Kurokami, and I'm signing off. <laughs>